Hi everybody, so my name is Maud. I'm going to try to show you how Local Motors is trying to go away from the traditional uh, automotive industry by producing locally the vehicles. So basically we're a startup, so um, it's an American startup uh, that aims at producing vehicles based on two main principles. So one is co-creation for the conception and the other one is micro-manufacturing for the production part. Um, so co-creation means that basically we have a co-creation community of 50,000 members, so either engineers, enthusiasts, um, freelancers, and they post ideas and they participate in challenges that we post on the platform uh, to, to create new concepts of vehicles. And basically we have five vehicles commercialized and every single vehicle had a challenge as a starting point. Um, so the co-creators are uh, rewarded according to their participation on, uh, on every single project. Um, and the micro-manufacturing part means that we want to build the vehicles uh, on a decentralized uh, production. So we have uh, mi little production units uh, depending on the local demand and to create what we call locally relevant vehicles. So that means we won't create the same kind of vehicle in uh, Europe than in Arizona, uh, where the company is based, or in Washington DC. Uh, the goal is to be closer to the customers and to have some uh, custom personalized uh, vehicles. So to give you an idea, we had, I'm going to show you a couple of examples of uh, vehicles that have been co-created and produced in micro factories. Um, but so every time we have a micro factory, we, we open a lab in each production unit to have kind of a physical relay to the online platform. Um, for workshops, uh, lectures, and everything related to uh, technology experimentation uh, on these projects. So this enables us to go five times faster because for the conception of one new series of vehicle, uh, you can go in only one month uh, based on a challenge. So you have a challenge online, co-creators can participate, and then you have your design sketch and you can go to prototyping phase uh, in the micro in the micro factory. Uh, so this is one of the one example. So this is the first co-created car um, in Arizona. It's the Rally Fighter. So as you can see, it's, it might be relevant for Phoenix, but maybe not for Europe. You won't see that in the rows here, um, I guess. Uh, so this one has been co-created in 18 months from the conception to, the, to putting it in the road, so homologation included. So in 18 months, we, we managed to create uh, this uh, new kind of, uh, of vehicle. Um, this is one other example uh, uh, to show how uh, this can bring uh, to, to, pro to market or prototyping much faster the vehicles. So this is um, a, a prototype that, that we've done for the DARPA, so the Defense Army Research Project Agency, the innovative uh, uh, department of the military in uh, the US. So basically they asked to do a challenge uh, to ask the co the co-creation co -creation community what could be the best um, prototype for military purpose. And we've done this prototype in five months, so ahead of schedule and on budget, uh, thanks to a challenge and a prototyping in, um, in the local uh, production unit. So this has not uh, led to a real product, uh, only to the prototype, but just to show you how you can go uh, much faster. Um, and another example that uh, shows the how to bring um, broader ideas on the platform and how to prototype fast uh, quickly. So we had Airbus coming to us um, because they were interested basically in the co-creation dynamic and they asked us to do a challenge based on the specific uh, technical re requirements that we defined together. Um, to do a challenge online uh, to create a new cargo drone, so a drone for delivery. Uh, and we had a challenge online, so basically the co-creators had four weeks uh, to bring ideas uh, according to some specific uh, technical, uh, some sp technical speci specifications. Um, and we had one uh, Russian co-creator that brought this idea of the Zelato, so it was the winning uh, project. project. Um, so the winner had a prize and uh, uh, will have some royalties for every single uh, drone that will be commercialized. Um, so again, in four weeks, we had a new concept for a cargo drone for Airbus. So for this uh, project, it has been um, 
ordered by a big company, but so we can work with uh, an Airbus and we can work for internal projects uh, led by our internal uh, engineers. Um, and so after these projects, we wanted to, to go further and to ask us what would be the real um, the real point to have um, a decentralized production, uh, leveraging some new technologies such as DDM, so the direct digital manufacturing, and basically the additive uh, manufacturing with the 3D printing. Um, so it made sense uh, to use this kind of technology to, to go much faster. So once the co-creation was made, we decided to go with uh, DDM to create the vehicle. So basically we had a challenge on uh, uh, what could be a 3D printed car so the co-creators came up with a design, um, which is the Stradi. So here, the whole chassis is 3D printed in uh, fab fiber carbon, carbon fiber and uh, plastic ABS. Um, and then you, you, you have to do the assembling, the machining and everything, but everything is done in 24 hours. So it might not be uh, something incre incredible for, um, like in, in a matter of time to create a new uh, vehicle, but to create a new series, a new model, it's kind of revolutionary because you can just adapt your CAD file, uh, click, print, and drive. Um, so the idea is to to do not only the prototyping, so this is the real end product, uh, to to go again much faster. Uh, this has been uh, the IMTS show uh, in Detroit uh, to to show how you can go from nothing on the table to a functional car in the end of the show. So the CEO came out of the of the show with the the very new. A printed car, um, and so when we came to to Berlin, because so it's an American company, and we've been working in Germany. Uh, when we first, like the first step outside of the of Europe of the US, sorry, uh, was in Europe, and we decided to ask the community, so the the end users to ask them uh, what are the next challenges in the cities facing growing urbanization, congestion and pollution and so on. And so we came up with a challenge online and the community had some ideas, among them uh, an autonomous vehicle system. So starting from this um, co-creation community again, we had this concept of an autonomous bus, which is OLI. Uh, so it's an autonomous, it's electric, it's um, sustainable. And the idea uh, was to to create uh, using the, the again this open open source process. So it's uh, Edgar Samiento uh, who comes from Colombia, who designed from a, a, lo a global perspective to for a very local uh, issue transportation issue. So basically, it's an autonomous vehicle system uh, working with an app. So you're localized. Uh, it comes to pick you up at your localization point, and uh, you put your destination. Uh, it's um, intelligent, so it can reroute itself according to the traffic and optimize the itinerary and everything. So right now we have some pilots um, in Berlin with Deutsche Bahn. We have some in Washington, D.C. And so, yeah, this is to show how you can answer um, local issues, uh, risk transportation issues, by using a micro-manufacturing process, uh, local productions, and being closer to the users and uh, the B2B, the, the customers and uh, the, e all the ecosystem of transportation for every city uh, we want to, to settle. So um, for the autonomous uh, system, you have different capacities, again, depending on the needs of the city. So you can have an eight passenger capacities, a two, 30, and so on. So it's very, uh, again, personalized and um, you can always iterate on the vehicle and uh, adapt it uh, going through the co-creation um, community and doing iterations between the engineers and uh, the community. So you have cargo as well. So that's it. Thank you so much.